Hey, what's up YouTube, Scavenger here, and we're back on day 48 of our 100 player fan game series. This video here is going to stretch across a few days, so it's going to cover day 48 all the way through to day 55. And the reason is nothing much happens and the game's actually starting to wind down at this point. As you can see, we had engaged those convoys of South Africa and were sinking them. And they're the reinforcements that are meant to come help Venezuela, who we can see here fleeing from West Africa. So we're pushing back into West Africa and we're taking it out and Venezuela, the tides have turned on him and he's losing territory quick. And those convoys were his reinforcements. So this is kind of the turning point here after three failed attempts to invade Africa. It kind of gave Venezuela the message that his approach wasn't working. And from here he started to decrease his activity. East Amazonas though, he wanted to keep playing. So we kept fighting him for the time being and kept some pressure on him, but for the most part, our fighting with South Africa at this point is winding down. If we move up into Europe, we can see that we're still making steady progress and there are still some unoccupied provinces. We're saving these for when the AI rebuilds the capital so we can go back in and capture them. At the same time against Sweden, we are progressing slowly. We don't have much forces in the region. We have a lot of artillery and infantry, but it's spread thin over a long front. Thankfully, this is the old AI AI in this game and we can deal with that pretty easily. So what I'm doing at the moment with my artillery is I'm trying to position it in a location where it can hit all three of those provinces just to speed things up. If we have a look back down here we can see that that combat's about to take place. We'll see how many convoys we can sink. So as we wait for that to happen we'll just have a look at what's happening here. North Sudan subs, Roger subs, have engaged the East Amazonas convoy and very fortunately for us he was able to engage it outside the range of East Amazonas' destroyers. So it's a subs versus convoy battle. Uh, now Rog does have 5 subs and our opposition has 135 convoys but as you can see a lot of damage has still been done. His convoy is now down to 113, which is roughly 20 lost at the cost of one sub. So that's not a bad trade off there. One sub now is a very light loss to take, considering how many troops it would take to kill those if they ever made it ashore in Africa. So we're now jumping back into the game roughly five days later on day 53. At this point, we're pretty much just cleaning up. We've destroyed or at least neutralized all major opposition and we're at the point now where we're beginning to clean up. We're going to have a look at what's happening in the Pacific in this section of the video. So our opposition were actually really really strong and had a really powerful navy and for Rog, North Sudan, to combat that would have been incredibly difficult and time consuming. So what we did is this, we did this while trading troops was still an option in the game. It's not currently. Um, but back when it was, what we did was I gave Rog all of my paratroopers, which was a massive amount. It was roughly something like 15, and pulled of his own paratroopers. All we've done, and all we're doing now, and all you'll see for the rest of this episode, is we're pretty much just island hopping our way down to New Zealand. Because of this, we can do this without a navy, and we have a strong enough air force that any opposition that does arise can be crushed swiftly, be it at some light costs. So... That's what we're doing. We're sending our paratroopers down to capture cities, runways, before they jump onto the next one. Uh, this way, they have nowhere to produce troops, and with our air force hammering them, there's not much they can do. At the same time in Europe, you can see that we've advanced forwards. However, on this case, I made a little bit of a mistake. My artillery has marched too far forwards and is very likely to be caught by the advancing enemy troops. However, 10 artillery is still a big challenge. From earlier on in the game when we lost our navy to Venezuela, you can see that we have successfully rebuilt it for the most part. It's coming along nicely, although we've still got some work to do, and we'll hopefully finish that before the game's over. So once again, we're back a little bit later on, and as you can see, those paratroopers have advanced down, and we now control land in Papua New Guinea, and on that section of Borneo. So we're progressing very, very slowly, uh, but it is effective. We'll need to rebuild the runway there, and once that's done, the paratroopers can march off and capture the surrounding territory. I do feel like this method is a little bit overpowered and destroys the purpose of a navy, considering you can island hop all the way down to New Zealand within like a day, if you have the right resources, and capture all the territory. Venezuela does have one last massive stack, and that's heading to the coast just off China. Now, we are a little bit worried about this. We don't know what his intentions are, considering he's basically defeated. But Rog has a large amount of SPAA that can outrange him. So we believe even if this does land, we'll be able to contain it very easily. At the same time too, Japan, Lord Keck has 
started to help us and clean up the territories in Russia. This is coming back a little bit later on, roughly a couple of hours later, as you can see. Now, advanced further down Papua New Guinea, and we're getting our paratroopers ready to fly into Australia. So, moving along pretty quickly here, we're capturing some of the surrounding islands as well. And we are moving very quickly and deploying our air forces to destroy any opposition that may stop us from advancing. So this is the last little jump for this video and also the last section. So as you can see now, we're now on the doorstep to Australia and our paratroopers are refueling, getting ready to launch. If we jump forwards one day, we can see the results of that. We control large sections of Eastern Australia and we've got paratroopers down south in Tasmania currently preparing to make the jump to New Zealand. We've got interceptors down there as well, scouting it out, making sure it is safe to do so, and when it is, we'll jump over and capture the last of the remaining islands in the Pacific, and that'll effectively give us most of the points we need to end the game. After this though, we will need to go to South Africa and South America to clean up. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.